Hi, uh, I'm Marty from Multipoint. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, connecting your underfloor heating to your existing heating system. So we've drawn on the board here a typical S-plan configuration, but what we're looking for then is to allow you to independently control your underfloor heating. If you've got radiators potentially on the first or ground floors, maybe stored hot water in a hot water cylinder, we want to have the capability to be able to run that underfloor heating totally independent from those two things, but also to fire the boiler when it needs to independently. And we do that typically with the use of a two-port zone valve. The zone valve is a mechanical isolation when we don't need that commodity to run and then electrically we typically fire the boiler through the wiring of the zone valve. Now on the, draw on the drawing here we've got a typical S-plan configuration. We've got a zone valve for the hot water cylinder, we've got a zone valve for the radiators possibly upstairs and downstairs and we've got the installation of new underfloor heating here on this manifold. And the key thing is we need to feed a pipe then from our heating system to serve our underfloor heating. Now in this quick sketch then we've only just included the primary flows, obviously there are return pipe works to consider. But before we start we need to look at where this pump is located, often called the primary pump. You can sometimes find this pump located within the boiler, if it's a combi boiler or a system boiler. But if it's, if it's remote and external from the boiler, it's important that we tee in or we connect the pipe work on what we commonly call the positive side of the primary pump. This will be the suction side, the negative side, this is the positive side and we need to make sure that we deliver water to the manifold. And to do that then, in this case, we're going to come off the positive side of the primary pump. We're going to take our flow then into our two port zone valve. So this is connecting your primary flow then to the underfloor heating off the positive side of the primary pump. And this allows you then to, with the independent zone valves, to run these things on their own. As I said, if this pump here was located within the boiler, we could have actually come off this point here and directly fed. So the location of this really needs to be established before we start piping our system. Now with the inclusion of multiple zone valves on our heating system, we need to make sure that water can return back to the boiler if all of those zone valves close. So the inclusion of an auto bypass again is a part of the critical design stage. And that auto bypass can be after the primary pump and it can be located then with an automatic bypass. I'll just class them as AB and again we're going to take that then back to a return back to the boiler or common it in with a common return somewhere else. So the system design is really critical. You want to make sure that you can not only run things independently on their own with their own time and temperature control, you want to make sure that each thing can fire the boiler independently when it needs to and they want to make sure that water can return back to the boiler if all those zone valves close the door. Now with combi boilers it can be a little bit different. If you're just serving underfloor heating off a combi boiler, combi boiler that serves hot water only, there's no requirement to include zone valves. But if that combi boiler is doing both radiators and underfloor heating, then we would look at zone valves for each of those two different heat emitters. I hope you found that informative. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like us on YouTube. Thanks for watching. See you again.